Hello, this is Ed from PracticalNetworking.net. Welcome to another video in the video series covering Access Control List on Cisco routers. This is video 4, where we're going to explore the syntax of configuring named access lists. In the last video, we picked apart the syntax of configuring numbered access lists. We also went through a bunch of configuration examples for numbered extended access lists. In this video, we'll be looking at the syntax to configure a named access list you'll see that the syntax is largely the same. Here's the syntax for configuring named access lists on Cisco routers. Now a lot of the fields that we already understand in the syntax for numbered access lists are simply repeated in named ACLs. In fact, if we color code the correlation, you'll see that the source and the source and destination in numbered access list is the exact same as the source and source and destination in named access list. You'll see that the protocol is the exact same thing as it was in extended numbered access list, and the action in all cases is exactly the same. You still have the three options, remark, permit, or deny. The ID number field is just a little bit different. In a numbered access list, the ID number had to be a digit, had to be a number. Whereas in a named access list, you can specify the ID as a number or a name, which means you can name your access list something like giraffe or penguin or whatever you'd like. The command is also a little different. To configure a numbered access list, you just use the command access list. To configure a named access list, you use the command IP access list. But it works the same way. The command is just a little bit different. So you'll see between numbered access list and named access list, the syntax is largely the same. There's actually only two differences. That word right in there and the sequence number right there. So let's talk about them. When you create your named access list, you explicitly define them as either standard or extended. So those concepts of standard access list and extended access list still apply. But in a named access list, they're not reliant upon the number you choose as the ID number. Remember in numbered access list, 1 through 99 is a standard access list and 100 through 199 is an extended access list. Well, that's not the case with named access list syntax. You simply define the ACL is either standard or extended directly in the command itself. Which brings us to this field, the sequence number. Recall that the order of entries in an ACL is significant. By default, when you add an entry to an access list, it appears at the end. Now this creates a limitation if you need to add something in between two other lines that exist. This sequence number field allows you to control exactly where a new entry appears you can specify that a new entry should appear at any line number you want. That's the benefit of that sequence number field. Now note that it is an optional field, that's what these brackets mean. That means if you don't put it, it'll simply appear at the end. But you can control that by specifying a number in that field. So that takes care of talking through the fields in the named access list syntax. At this point, you might be asking yourself, if the fields and syntax of a named ACL are so similar to a numbered access list, what's the point of named ACLs? Great question. Named ACL syntax provide additional features which don't exist in numbered ACLs. In fact, do you remember that issue we had in the last video where we couldn't remove individual ACL lines from the numbered access list without blowing away the entire ACL? Well, that problem goes away if you're using named access list. You ought to understand that these tools were initially created a long time ago and have evolved as more features have been thought of and added. We went from standard access list, which only filter on source IP address, to extended access list, which filter on five different fields. In the same way, access lists were initially implemented with numbered ACL syntax. And the next step in the evolution is the named ACL syntax we just discussed. Other than the feature we just mentioned, there are other features in named ACLs that don't exist with numbered ACLs, and we'll be unpacking them all in detail in the next video. The key takeaways for this video is understanding the fields in named ACL syntax and how they are different from or similar to numbered ACL syntax, and finally, that named ACLs include features that don't exist with numbered ACLs. But that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I want to thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video as we go through a demonstration of the configuration of named ACLs as well as some other features.